Well, hey, y'all. Welcome back to our After the Show chat. My view on The View. Happy Monday, October 14th, of course, 2024, season 28. You know, guys, I got to tell y'all, I am extremely tired today. I'm like lethargic and I know it's all hormones. Right, ladies? Shout out to our men. You know what's up, too. I mean, you have female friends, girlfriends, uh, maybe your best friend is a girl, you know what's all up, what, what's, what's up with these things. Sometimes you just don't understand what your body is doing as a woman and you have to say, okay, I'm just tired and my body's saying go to bed early. So after I, I'm done hanging out with you guys, I'm going to eat a little bit of soup and then I'm headed to bed. Yes, at around this time of the day. Okay. So thanks for being with me, with all of us. Check the description box. If you happen to be new, of course, you're curious, what is this? Who am I? All those things. And don't forget any time if you find yourself smiling, laughing, or even disagreeing, drop in the comments, let us know what's going on. And of course, hit the thumbs up button. I was so tired today, y'all, that I, before the show came on, what I've been doing uh, since I made my decision to no longer listen to their Trump talk, I will make sure I have the re remote right next to me. But when the show came on, I sat down on the couch. I'm off work today. Uh, well, part of the day I was off work. And um, and I will tell you, I was just too tired to get up and get it. So I had to press through the Trump conversation and even that abortion ad that we talked about earlier today. I was like, goodness gracious. So at any rate, let's talk. I have to tell y'all, I thoroughly enjoyed the entire show today. Listen, I know I've said this multiple times, but guys, I mean it. For me, so far, and I know we have a long way to go, you know, but so far, season 28 has been one of the best for me, actually, since Megan left. I think she left in 24. 25 was great because we were just like, ah, no more craziness, right? But then 26, 27 really was kind of lackluster for me, even though there were some great shows. But so far, um, I'm really digging all the shows and I'm happy about that because I always prefer, like you guys, to have positive viewer experiences instead of lackluster or negative viewer experiences. So I was extremely happy with segment one, two, and three. You want to know why? I know some of you probably know why. But if you weren't with us, um, last season, I made a suggestion. <laughs> Brian, I made a suggestion. I said, what really gets in my craw is that sometimes when the women do organically disagree with each other, like they're not doing it just for the TV, it's like real organic, it gets really good. And then they stop and then they go to another topic like a Reddit or someone wrote into Dear Abby. It's like, no, no, no. Why not carry that over into the, ne into the next segment? You know, I was saying, is it really necessary to change topics every segment? You know, when they're just doing a day of all hot topics or whatever. And today, for the very first time in a long time, and actually, I don't know if they've ever, uh, well, not ever, but I don't think any time recent, and I'm speaking of the last few seasons, have they ever carried the same topic over into three segments? And of course, I know why. It was a slow news day, <laughs> and you know, they were kind of like feeling it, feeling the air, but I loved it. It was organic, it was good, but then Whoopi kind of pooped on my parade, as she would say. So let me look at my notes here, because I won't be playing any clips today either. But you know, you saw the show, so you know what happened. Um, okay, so remember Whoopi posed the question about these polls and the fact that the polls are now showing that um, Kamala and Donald uh, are neck and neck, basically. That is like a tight race. That's what the polls are saying. Now, we know people lie, and I'm like, Whoopi, nobody ever polls me. I've told you guys that for years. I don't know anybody. I know people who've actually registered to be polled, like via text message, etc. They don't get no polls. So like when they say half of African Americans, I'm like, who? Who did y'all talk to? Because I know a whole bunch of folks. Y'all ain't talked to them. So I understand where Whoopi is coming from. A lot of these polls don't mean anything. But she asked the lady, she said, why do y'all think the polls, you know, have this race so tight? And one of, oh, Anna said something, guys, that I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so true. I never thought of it like that. See, this is why I love when Anna's there. Anna said, she said, I personally 
like that the polls show that they're so tight, you know, the race is so tight. She said, because this will keep us from getting complacent, complicit or complacent. She said, we will uh, remember that we must go out and vote. And she said, she recounted what she's told us before. She said, when she was at the DNC, Hillary Clinton told her after Trump got elected, anytime she would go anywhere, Hillary said people would come up to her and apologize to her. Y'all remember uh, Anna saying that this morning? And, she, and again, she's told us this before, but she said, and she would say, the people would say, I'm so sorry I didn't come out to vote because, you know, the polls had you so far ahead and I just didn't think you needed my vote. And so I never thought about it, guys. This is a good thing, you know? Um, so when Anna made that statement, it just reminded me that our perspective is really, it really matters. Um, I was getting frustrated with the polls, even though I don't care about them technically, but it's just frustrating because, you know, everyone bases their commentary around polls, right? You know, when you watch the news and things like that, the evening news with David Muir, everything like that. But when she said that, I was like, hmm, I'm going to change my perspective. It's a good thing that it's tight because no one who cares about our country, no one who wants to see a change of the guard will get, um, they, they won't fall asleep. So I just loved it. Sarah also made a fantastic point. She pointed out when it comes to undecided voters, Sarah said, and again, they're talking about the polls. She said, I think the reason why the polls are so tight is because these undecided folk, it's not that they don't know the difference between Kamala and Trump. They don't see how Kamala is different from Biden. And boy, oh boy, that's what got it started, right, y'all? This was a healthy debate. It was very good. It was, uh, again, very uh, grown woman-ish, right? Uh, when Sarah said, uh, Sonny, I disagree with you. I think that people don't see the difference between Biden and Kamala. And when Kamala was here, she should have done a better job at answering your question. And boy, oh boy. So then Anna jumped in and then Alyssa was trying to jump in. And I was like, give me more. <laughs> I love this. Yes. Yes. This is what I've been saying that I need in my viewer life. Get back to this. Get back to these organic debates. But then Whoopi, <laughs> my, my dear blessed Whoopi, y'all know. Now here it is. Now y'all know Whoopi do this all the time and y'all know I ain't lying. Here it is. Now the women are doing all this. Alyssa's like, but wait a minute, such and such. No, she wasn't as loud as I am, of course. And here go Whoopi. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all saw it. <sighs> Swivels in her chair. This after s s ranting about something, she swivels in her chair and says, "It's up to y'all." I'm like, "What? How dare you stop this debate to turn to them to to go to your go to? It's up to y'all. What we say up here." And I'm like, "Oh, whoopee, <laughs> whoopee! How, what was the point of that? You stopped a great conversation to swivel and tell everybody it's up to them. Y'all know whoopee says this all the time, and so I was like, okay." So then uh, Whoopi said, let's, this is good. This is good. So let's continue it for next segment. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you what I love for the next segment, honey child. Whoopi start when they came back, Whoopi was trying to finish her rant. And Alyssa interrupted in a, in a respectful way. And she said, but I just wanted to finish what I was trying to say. You know, of course, I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing, excuse me, the way Alyssa started off. But that's what she in essence said. And then Whoopi goes, well, wait, well, let me finish this, this thing right here. And I shouted at the TV, <laughs> Whoopi, you don't have a thing. You don't have a thing. I'm like, girl, stop it. You don't have a thing. You're not talking about nothing. Let this girl go on and finish what she was going to say last thing. Anywho. Y'all know I love Whoopi. I know some people accuse me of, quote unquote, hating on Whoopi. Isn't that silly, y'all? I don't know what these people's problem is. I mean, for people like that, you got to know they have a problem. If all I did was just talk about the positive things Whoopi did on her job, because remember, that's all I'm talking about is her job performance. That's not realistic. And then don't take this commentary so seriously, folks. We're just here having fun. And if you're a party pooper or a wet blanket, get out. 
No, wait a minute. Wait. I wish I had my teacup next to me. You guys remember um, Get Out, <laughs> Jordan Peele's movie, <laughs> In the Sunken Place, when that lady would stir the <laughs> stir the teacup. That's what I'm going to do to these, these crazies. But yeah, but I'm like, whoopee, hush, you don't have a thing to finish. What do you mean? I got to finish this thing. You ain't saying nothing. I was like, girl, y'all, I'm telling you. Okay, so then Alyssa finished what she had to say. Then Sarah jumped back in. Then then Sunny jumped back in. And then and I was like, yes. And then it was so good. They carried it over to the third segment. I was like, honey, this is what I've been begging for. For those of you like me who also read Megan Stack's article, and I know some of you are going to be like, why are you bringing this up again? Because I can, okay? But you know, if you read her, her article two uh, seasons ago, uh, The View Has Narrowed, uh, her uh, opinion essay that came out in the New York Times, remember, that's one of the things she said. I just want to make that I say it. But she said, The View lacks substantive debates they the debates that they have they just weren't of substance but today was one of them and it was really good y'all I'm telling you I was I was tired as a workhorse but I'm gonna tell you something I was loving it I was like yeah that I was like talking to I mean I'm I'm like I hope (laughs) hope nobody's walking their dog or something they're like who is what is going on over there okay let me look at my notes um Did you guys see when Anna had the makeup? See, what did I tell y'all? Anna is more, she is funnier than both the comedians put together that we have on our show. When Anna was talking about the border crisis, and then she had them put up that picture of Trump. And she said, if you didn't see it, you got to go back and see it. She said, the only border crisis is the border between. (laughs) And every woman understood this because how many of us, if you wear powder or especially foundation, you know, you have to use either your hand or those makeup, uh, you know, um, sponges to, to, you know, blend it in so that <laughs> it looks natural. So I was like, here come Anna with the props and everything. I loved it. I'm telling you guys, Anna's my favorite. She's my favorite right now. Y'all know how I am. <laughs> if Anna starts acting a fool next season, I might change my mind. But I will tell y'all, I fell out laughing when she did that. <laughs> I was like, they, you know what? I don't know how much money Anna is making on this show, but guys, I'm gonna tell you something. Now you, you may disagree. And I want, if you do let, let us all know in the comments, but I feel like for what she brings to this show, she really should be getting paid about up there with Whoopi and Joy. And I know, I know what some of you are going to say, how ridiculous, but I'm sorry. She not only elevates the conversation, but she brings the comedic relief in a way that Joy and Whoopi, who are comedians by trade, they just don't. And um, she has the hookup. You know, she knows so many people. You know, it's because of her, I do believe, that Biden and Kamala came to our show. Can you think of, can you guys realize how awesome of a season it's been so far? We've not only had the sitting president on our show, Okay, with just less than two months, the show being um, in season 28, less than two months, but also the sitting vice president and she's running for president. I mean, guys, this has been a historic season already. Okay, okay. Let me hurry up here because I've got to eat this soup and go to sleep. Um, You know, I learned something today. Okay. I love when I loved Rosie Perez. I told you guys the entire show stood out to me today. I loved Rosie Perez's segment. Y'all, I did not know Rosie was 60 years of age. Time flies so fast. And when they showed that clip of her on Soul Train, shout out to Soul Train, Soul Train, (laughs) Don Cornelius, right? Um, I remembered that and I almost came to tears because I remember watching it, you know, you know, as a, as, as a young girl with my family. And so it was just really nostalgic to see, wow, look at Rosie, you know, I loved everything, but I learned something. She said that Carrie Ann from Dancing with the Stars, that Carrie Ann was a fly girl. Now, all of my in living color people, is that what she, she meant fly girl in that way? Is that correct? Because Sunny was bringing up, you know, you used to be a fly girl and so on and so forth on in living color. I don't remember seeing Carrie Ann, but maybe Carrie Ann looked different then. So, and I, of course, I could Google it, and I think I probably will when I get off, get off of here with y'all, but I, I didn't think of it at the time. But I was like, what? Carrie Ann from Dancing with the Stars used to be a fly girl? What? I know Jennifer Lopez used to be a fly girl. But anyway, 
Um, so I love when she spoke to the Latinas. I love it. I love the fact that Anna said, hey, take the floor, sister. I loved everything she said. And you want to know what I loved even more than um, her passionate plea for, for them to come out, to get out the vote is when she said, I'm a Democrat, but I'm not far left. What was she saying? We do need to get the border under control. I don't believe in just open borders, you know? And so I like that she had the courage to say that at our table. And I was really glad that Joy wasn't there because y'all know Joy would have interrupted and said, well, what do you mean? You know, something. So it was just a really, really, really good segment. Now, V your deal. Brian, I got to ask y'all something. Did you guys see the snicker? The, why do I, it's not Snickers like the candy bar, the sneaker heels, high heels that Sarah had on, they were to die for. When I tell you I raised my tired body <laughs> off the couch when I saw those shoes, I was like, I got to have those shoes. I got to have those shoes. Now, there's a website. I can't think of it right now, but there's a website. Like anytime you see the ladies wear anything, and you're interested in like who's the designer or where, where can you get something similar for cheaper? There's actually a website. It's not run by The View. And in the moment, because I haven't visited this website in a few seasons, I can't think of uh, who runs it. But you can go on this website and you can see what they were wearing. But if I'm not mistaken, the shoes aren't included on there. So, Brian, I have a special request. I know you're listening or someone on your team is. Whenever... I don't know if Sarah's on the behind the table today. So if so, you can ask her today. But if the next time she's on there, can you guys, can you please bring up her shoes? I need to know, were those hers? If so, who, where, where does she get them from? What's the name of the shoe? And if they're not hers and they're from the wardrobe department, could y'all please, could y'all please bring it up on the behind the table podcast? Like sincerely, I want to get those shoes and not just for me. I was thinking the ladies, aren't those the perfect date night um, heels when you're with your man and you got your jeans on? And, you know, if you're like me, like I start out in those kind of shoes, but I always have a pair of flats in, in every car. OK, in case, hey, it goes, you know, sometimes you're like, OK, I can't do it today. I will tell you guys, I don't know. I haven't had an experience in a long time where I fell in love with a piece, with an item of clothing like that or item of, of uh, what we call it, guys, an accessory, whatever it is, shoes. I haven't had, like, I know I have beautiful clothes. I have beautiful clothes. I'm, I'm not going to even fake the funk. I have a beautiful wardrobe. But I will tell you, those shoes for me, I could see myself in them. I could see already the outfit connections. I was like, I must have them. The black ones, just like she had, they were gorgeous and they were cute. And so I was like, unless they're like $500, then I can't afford them. But I need to know what they were, Brian. I need you to bring this up on the Behind the Table podcast. So there you have it, guys. That was the show for me. It was fantastic. I think the women did a great job. You know, Mondays are always hard. They're hard for everybody, especially a show like this when, like, Alyssa was stumping all weekend. I think Sunny was probably doing something with her kids. If not, she was working. Uh, we know that uh, Joy was writing and working. Uh, we know Anna was traveling. You know, Sarah speaks now at these things, and uh, she also has to do promotions for the game show that that she's on and you know Whoopi is working like a horse too and so and and of course the behind the the, the uh, scenes people the producers the writers Brian Teta they're all working uh, this is the kind of job where if you're behind the scenes it really doesn't stop you you kind of take work home in your head even if you're not physically taking it home and we know the women have to they supposed to <laughs> prepare and read up on all the things to be prepared for the conversation for the next day but I will tell you for all that they do today, I have to say, was really, really a good show. And it was high energy. And what I liked, even though Whoopi pooped on my parade, she, she was high energy today. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. So guys, there you have it. That's my view on The View. What say you? What stood out to you on today's show? What were the gripes, the, the praises? What did you guys like and didn't like? And if you saw Sarah's shoes, and you already know, what they're called. Okay, I need you to drop it in the comments. If for some reason, honey child, your comment is hung up in the spam, I will this time make time to go dig in the spam folder. I'm going to put in the search bar shoes. And I'm going to see because I have to have those. I, I have to have those. And again, I haven't felt that way about an item of clothing 
or something like this in a long time. I must have those shoes. Okay, guys. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Have a good one.